Hello, everyone. Well, thanks uh, to be here to listen to my story. And thanks to the FDA and the Float Conference for inviting me. Uh, I will talk mostly about the Big Bang, evolution, and changes. <laughs> yes, louder. OK. Well, I want to acknowledge, of course, before everyone, John Lilly and Michael Atchison, without them. And then uh, there's Glenn Perry, John Turner, Tom Fine, Peter Sweatfeld. Changes came for me when, let's say, I was 14 years old. Rock and roll was just another kind of music on the rodeo. And then came the Beatles. That's what decided me to learn English. I must, I must say that in Quebec province, you can live in French without ever learning English. A few albums later, there was rumor that they were interested in LSD and then in meditation. I had such a profound experience dropping LSD and a chunk of ashish at the same time that exper I experienced the non Bell's non-locality phenomena, which, which means all particles in the universe I joined together. I was for eternity one of this, was just one particle of the universe in an infinite universe where all particles were connected together. Much too far for me, much too far. That's when I switched to meditation. And then, a click. Well, then I read Alvin Toffler, The Future Shock, where he predicts that in the future, there will be more and more changes, and even exponentially. All I had to adapt was meditation. I had the thought that if evolution brings such a rapid change, it had to give us modern ways to adapt. So I got very curious about all the research and meditation that were going on that would affect our system. I tried tools and techniques to influence brainwaves. In 1980, I read an article about isolation tanks in, the, in California. I had to try it. In 1982, I heard of a tanning salon that had one in Montreal. A uh, tanning salon? It was an original Oasis tank. The model had large black foam glued around the door where it sits. One, the one at the bottom got so dried of salt that they just removed it and never replaced. The neon light from the salon was going right in and I was very frustrated. I wanted the full experience of darkness and silence. No, that was gone. So I took deep breaths, closed my eyes, and pretended it was dark. After a wonderful weightlessness, I felt a wonderful weightlessness and lost track of time. I booked for another session for the next week. A few weeks later, the salon was bankrupt. I had to get that tank for my home. But before the auction took place, I learned of a Samadhi tank for sale that was used also. I decided to get both tanks and open a float center that I called Integral Relaxation Center. <laughs> the movie Altered States, the movie Altered State helped a lot. Everybody was curious to go and change into an ape shape. Ape shape. Anyway. Ah. And that was my first poster done by an artist that was uh, one of my clients. Mm. 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 
And those were the original tanks. That was me, uh, age 35. And that's the Samadhi tank. I, yes, Samadhi and the Ova. Okay. In November of the same year, 1982, the Perrys invited me to their place. And then when I entered, I was so moved by finding that they had created the same and similar feeling that I designed in my center. We were at the opposite sides of the continent, and I felt like home. Two years later, two days later, sorry, Two days later, I was at SLN Center for three days for the event that was called Mind, Brain, and Unitive Consciousness, where John Lilly was participating along with Amit Goswami, Terence McKenna, and even, even David Boom, a scientist, a physicist to work with Einstein. John asked me the same question the four occasions that I met him. How long do you have your clients to flow? My answer was, one hour. Ridiculous. That was always his answer. <laughs> from then, I went to all gathering from FTA organization, plus the one by IRIS, which is in International Rest Investigator Society, where I met John Turner, Tom Fine, Peter Swetfeld, Michael Hutchison, so many others. In 1983, a client of mine bought two of our tanks in New York, in New York, and then asked me to become his partner. I suggested the name Ovarium. Mm. Mm. Well, mm. it was cool. Mm. Okay, I'm going to show you the um, two tanks, the OVA and the uh, Flotarium that we have at Ovarium now. Uh, so this is the OVA tank and the Flotarium. You can notice that there is no gas spring on the OVA, and uh, they had to shut the company down because they never could find gas spring to hold the door. Uh, Yeah. I was already installing Samadhi tanks and I extended my offer with Flotarium that just opened, uh, started to build tanks in New York. In from 1983 to, 90 1983 to 1992, I sold and installed 50 tanks around the province of Quebec and even one in Guadalupe. Guadalupe. In 1985, I had to close my first center but that's another story. Uh, Justin uh, told me that I should take a breath from time to time. You, you can breathe with me too. Thank you. In 1982, Michael Hutchison told me that he would, about an idea that he had of my, uh, writing a book about floating. I promised that if he would do it, I would have it translated in French. He published it, in 1984, and I, the translation came on uh, in 1985 that sold for 10,000 copies in French. Um, well, I talked about the gas springs and everything. Good. In 1999, I inherited from my mother a house and enough money to buy a bank building. I thought, you know, flotation to be renowned, to be trusted, should be in a bank. <laughs> <laughs> Invest in yourself, <laughs> in a bank. <laughs> So very much six tanks, three OVA, three Flotarium, and uh, it started with six message room. It's, it grew up. 
it grew up to um, 10 massage room and other services like uh, CO and Neurospa, which are light and sound device. Um, yeah. What about this light and sound device? Michael Hutchison wrote other books, maybe you know, Mega Brain and Mid Mega Brain Power, where he talks again about flotation tanks, but also about mind machines. I was really hooked on that. And in 1990, uh, the first uh, for the public mind and, mind and light and sound machine uh, were introduced at Ovarium. Okay. That's the book on Mega Brain. I have one copy that was uh, autographed by Michael Hutchison. And this is the CO and Neurospa. Neurospa is the long zero gravity chair, and CO is the, the goggles that, and the headphones that you see on the left. So you can do both at the same time, or one. Uh, Neurospa brings a type of vibration that's unique into your uh, nervous system by shaking your uh, sidewise your spine at the rhythm of the, uh, the bass, which could, be, which could be between 50 and 200 hertz. It's fantastic. Five minutes and you can, see, you can feel a uh, source that di just disappear. Um, after I tried everything as a head support for the tank, I designed my own product and had it produced by a company that specializes in swimming equipment for re-education in pools. So the one on the right, uh, on your left, is me uh, using uh, an exacto to carve into a piece of thing, and I had that developed. Okay, that, that was before the Halo. Mm -hmm. Of course, Halo came much later after that. In 2003, SARS virus closed most of the center. We were so lucky to go across that crisis. In 1910, Mark, Mark Friskel at Floatworks in London invited everyone to a float summit for a float summit. It was the first time that I was hearing of a center that had more tanks than ovarium. Of course, I joined for the summit. In 2012, I went to a float meeting in Sweden. And at the end, two participants invited everyone to join them the next year at the first float conference in Portland. I promised I would be there, and I was. And I still am ama amazed by their dedication, energy, love of floating. Thank you to Jocelyn, Jake, and all the others that joined them. I'm so happy to meet the old and the new researchers year after year at the Flon Conference. The time didn't start also, so I don't know where I am in time. <laughs> okay. Um, there was something I wanted to tell you about microdosing. Uh, I would like to have more, uh, you know, since 1969, I didn't take anything uh, of the psychedelics at a dose that would bring me higher. And I look forward to do it one day with, you know, the good environment and the good people. But Recently, just a couple of years ago, I heard about microdosing. I, I was amazed that, you know, me being so aware of everything that could help, I just since two years that I know about microdosing. And I was thinking, flotation can be an alternative to microdosing. Hmm, interesting. But a couple of weeks, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I heard about uh, an article uh, that was in, uh, anyway, 
a, a, a study that was made in England comparing microdosing to a placebo. And they found that the next day and six days later, there was absolutely no change from the, no difference from the placebo and the microdosing. Well, we have thought it. And there are lots of proof, lots of studies that show that it works. So, what is the alternative? Flotation is really the alternative. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to turn 74 uh, before the end of this month, and I really have to find uh, partners or buyers or ovarian to continue. I, it's my life dedication since uh, I'm 33. And uh, I was looking for that, for something to, for me to do in life. Because after that trip that I had in 69, I was sure that there was something else. There was something else to help cope with the changes, the tremendous changes that come into our, our, all our lives and mine. Um, so I'm just telling you that. And also I want to thank uh, two additional persons that joined Ivarium recently, Hugo Laplante and René Picard. And I would like to thank you so much for being with us. Would you stand? And I would like everybody also to greet all the new person that are here for their first conference. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. See you next year. Yes.